top of your mat and bring your heels together, toes apart. And just take your arms up, big inhale. Exhale, hands to your sides. Inhale. And exhale. And again, big inhale. And exhale. And then we're going to do a crescent to warm up. So come up, arms up. Hold on to your left wrist, bend your elbows, and bend over to your right. So the elbows are bent so you're not stretching through the shoulders, you're stretching through the sides of your waist. Push down into your feet, lift up through the crown of your head, big inhale, and then back up. And I know you can't see my head, but that's still okay. Hold on to your wrists, lift up, exhale over, big crescent, and back up. All right, and then we're gonna do this little twisting arm warm up. So take your feet mat dis uh, outer hip distance apart and we're just going back and forth. It's good to warm up the organs. And so my knees are a little bit bent and I'm just whapping my low back side to side. I do this one in the creative core class often. It's a nice way to get the breath moving, get the lungs gliding, get all that fascia gliding. Wake things up in the morning. I was very pleased that we didn't get six feet of snow last night. I just built my hoops for my garden and got the reaping on and everything, and it's all still intact. All right, and there we go. Okay, so that was for me more than anything after stressing out about connectivity. <laughs> Come back to the front of your mat. Cross one foot in front of the other. Take one arm on top of the other. Now, this, this way of coming down to the floor is just to challenge your balance and also to check in with yourself every day. So I come up on my toes, lowering down, right? You kind of feel, okay, my knees are okay, and then sit back. So I just point that out. You can come down any way you want. Arms come out, heels together. We're gonna do the 100, leaning back, roll back on your low back, legs reach out, and palms face down, pump your arms. Go inhale, and exhale. So remember you're pumping from the shoulder joint, like you're pivoting around the shoulder joint. Elbows are straight, fingers long. Technically fingers and thumbs go together. If you watched the little video I made of our canoe trip last week, my daughter Georgia is in her Crazy Creek chair, it's like a camping chair, doing the 100, and she does it just like me with her thumbs spread wide, it's hysterical. So she doesn't even know she's doing it, but she's copying me without even knowing it. Okay, and inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. One more inhale. And exhale, 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 exhale. Legs lower, arms over, head. Okay, arms come up, head comes up, rolling up. And then inhale, shoulder blades back. And now, and we exhale, roll it down. Now, for the roll up, that was the traditional style, right? But we could go arms up, head up, then you get stuck, bend your knees, lift your feet off the mat, and use your legs. And that is probably the nicest low back way to do the roll up if your low back bothers you. But then on the way down, see if you can't really lengthen the low back, pull traction on the low back to come down. And then arms come up, head comes up. So let's say I get stuck, I can bend my knees, lift my feet, and just use my legs as a little momentum there. Okay, inhale, shoulders back, pulling the low abdominals. We'll do two more. It's nice to articulate the spine in the morning, use those low abdominal muscles, exhale. If you're really good at the roll up, you feel comfortable and you have, your pelvis works with it. So then right here, challenge yourself to really go slow. And then on the way up too. So right here, kind of challenge yourself to really engage those abdominal muscles. And last one, rolling down to hug the sides of the waist and slow it down. And exhale, exhale. Okay, draw your right knee into your chest. Hug it in. We're holding on to the shin and the left leg is reaching long. Relax your shoulders as best you can. If things are really tight, um, you just have to loosen your grip or don't worry about your shoulders, right? Okay, but I'm hugging that knee into the chest, reaching through my left leg nice and long. Get that opposition. Left leg reaching, right knee tucking in. Then, interlace your hands behind your right thigh. 
push your thigh gently into your hands, so it moves toward vertical, and we'll flex the ankle, and then we're going to straighten the leg and point the toes, and flex, and bend the knee, straighten, and point just a few of these, just flossing the back of the hamstring, straighten and point, bend the knee, flex, straighten and point, bend the knee and flex, and last one, straighten and point, leave the leg there, hands to your sides. Okay, so here we go for leg circles. Now the thing that's going to help you the most, not gripping your right quadricep or hip flexor up at the hip there, is to bend the knee when you do hip circles. So I'll demonstrate that. Those of you who do with straight legs, go for it. Otherwise, my knee bent, my knee turned out to the right slightly. I'm going to take my leg across to the <clears throat> left, down, and up. So I'm just doing the same thing. But with the knee bent, it helps you focus, go across and draw the knee in. It helps you focus on circling from the hip joint and not trying to hold up the leg. And that will like short circuit your brain. Okay, now reverse directions out to your right for five and four. And we want to short circuit the brain so you're not gripping with that hip flexor. So that knee bent really can help. Two and one. And then place that leg down, okay? Draw your left knee in. And we're hugging the shin to start. So I've got my hands interlaced around my shin, my left shin. I'm hugging that knee into the chest as I reach my right leg nice and long. Stretching through that right leg. Relax your shoulders. I'm sorry I had to uh, forego the Bluetooth ear things today because that was like one too many levels of connectivity. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, it's a little echoey today, but I'll get them back, I'll get everything, hopefully. Alright, interlace your hands behind your thigh, and you just push your thigh gently away, so it's moving toward a right angle. Ankle is flexed, and then go ahead and point and straighten, point your toes, and bend and flex, and straighten and point, and bend and flex, and one more. Just gliding, if you're going slow, working through those tissues, checking out your foot mobility today, and then we'll straighten, and you don't have to point your toe up there, it just hangs out, hands by your sides. Leg circles, either with a straight leg, and again, the knee turns just a little bit out to the side if you like, pull the leg in toward you, across the body down, and kick it up. Or, we do it with a bent knee, and kick, and across, and I draw that knee in, and across, and I'm resisting with the right leg hugging the sides of my waist in, across, and draw it in, and one more that direction, and then reverse out to your left. So hugging the waistline in. By bending the knee, it's going to make you focus more on the waistline movement and holding it all still, the pelvic tilt, etc., than sort of the freak out of the hip flexor. Last one. Draw it in and place that leg down. Okay. One roll up, or just rock yourself up to sit for rolling like a ball. Draw your heels in. If you're at home, make sure you have a nice surface to do this on, right? Because um, you don't want to bruise your vertebrae. And you don't have to rock, right? So you could just hang out with us here, holding your ankles, balancing, hugging your waistline, and make it a static exercise. Otherwise, we roll and come up to balance. Yep, roll and balance. And then check, are you rolling off to one side? Or are you just going right down the center of the mat and right back up the center of the mat. So sometimes that says a little something about our pelvic asymmetry, shoulders, maybe our abdominal muscles. Last one. Okay. And now, right into the abdominal series of five, I stretch my left leg out, hold on to the right knee, so I don't even have to move my right hand, roll it back, and there I am. Sink the abdominals, hugging from the side of the waist, switch sides, and reach and switch, and reach. Relax the top of the shoulders, and then find more low abdominals. So we go nice and slow in the beginning here, but then we'll pick up the pace. So you go inhale, inhale, and exhale, exhale. Find the breath that works with some rhythm. My feet brush through the center so they're not going wildly off to the side. Everything's hugging to the midline. And we're gonna do one more breath. We go inhale, Inhale and exhale, exhale, rest. Okay, double leg stretch. 
heels together. So those of you who struggle with this in class, I want you to pay particular attention to keeping your heels touching the whole time in this exercise. Curl your head and chest up. Resync the abdominals, hugging from the side of your waist. Inhale, hug those heels together. And then exhale, keep hugging them in like a little frog coming back in. Inhale, reach low. Exhale, hug them in. Inhale, reach out. Use your abdominals. Exhale. Right? When you stretch long, you gotta tuck those front ribs in more. Exhale. Like your low back should not be moving. Your mid back should not be moving. Exhale. Let's do one more. Check it out. Feel your low ribs. Are they really on the mat? Are they still on the mat? They should still be on the mat. And then rest. Okay. Scissors. Hold on to the back of your legs. Curl your head and chest up. Legs up to the sky. I turn my toes out just a little bit, heels together, hold on to my right uh, calf, and then left leg goes on. So my heels are still going to brush through the center, and then I'm going to touch each time. Although for me, my calves get in the way, but maybe your heels brush, and we bounce, go bounce, 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 bounce. So that little bounce at the bottom is to help challenge your abdominals. So as your leg bounce, check that your abdominals are bouncing, right? And you can watch that out of the corner of your eye and reach and reach and last one, breathe and breathe and breathe and breathe and dry your knees. And you all know by now that when I say last one, it means it's completely arbitrary. It means something to me, but <laughs> who knows how long you're going to have to go. Okay, so double leg lift. Hold on to your shins, curl your head and chest up. One hand behind the other. So you're stacking your hands, one on top of the other at the base of the skull. And then check that you're resting your head into your hands, right? You're not cranking your head up and overstretching the back of your neck. Legs up to the sky. Here's another one, like single leg circles, where you could bend your knees, kind of like Charlie Chaplin. I got my heels together, knees are apart. I can do my double leg lift like this. And I'm really working on my ribs down. So let's start, right? Lower down, lift up. I'll do a few like this with my knees bent and back up, and then a few with legs straight. And maybe I just go a little bit, and I'm learning how to tame my front ribs. I'm right? gonna use those muscles to integrate the spine, or I can lower down, and then I need to learn how to use more of the butt muscles too. So adding all of that into that core abdominal work, and starting to spread the work out a little lower toward the hamstrings, and a little higher toward the back and the shoulder blades. Let's do two more. Go down, 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 and pull it in and up. And last one, find the shoulder blade muscles, hug them in to the size of your waist, and enough. Okay, adding the shoulder blade thing there is, is a little bit of an advanced um, focus, and it will possibly take your focus away from your abdominals, so only do that if you're looking to sort of add more. Crisscross. Hold on to your shins, curl your head and chest up. Again, one hand behind the other at the base of the skull. Fingertips to wrists. Elbows a little bit bent in front. Stretch your left leg long, still keeping to the middle, and cross, armpit to knee. And then switch. Go armpit to knee. Now actually try to get your armpit on your knee. And then switch, or on your thigh, I should say. Go up, two, three, and switch. Now genuinely try to curl up there. And switch, like, could you do it? Is there some day that you could that I don't really know if it's actually possible. We're going to stay optimistic and switch. Curl up, 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 and one more slow to this side, and then we're going to pick up the pace, and we're going to go inhale, switch, inhale, exhale, exhale. Stay with me. Inhale, inhale, and exhale, exhale. One more. Inhale, inhale, and exhale, exhale, and rest. All right, good. Now your guts should be warmed up. Uh, rock up, so we can do, you could do a proper roll up, or you could do just arms back, arms come up. I integrate those abdominals, and I use my legs to help me out. For spine, stretch forward. Feet are mat distance apart, so it's about two feet. Ankles flexed. Arms out in front of you. We're working on posture here. That's why when we do this class, um, when, when we're all together, we hold this posture for some amount of time just to check in and see, do I have a spine strength? Can I lift up through the crown of my head? Are my thighs are, you know, burning or they on fire? If, the, if that's the case, sit up on something. You can even roll your mat a few times, 
how you can sit on a block, you can sit on a pillow so that you have the proper pelvic tilt. We're looking for the back of the pelvis right here to be vertical. Okay, so there, now I've talked long enough that you've held the posture long enough. Inhale, sit tall. Exhale, just the chin tucks, just the upper back rounds, and then round it back up. And then round back into it. You can coordinate the breath. It's an exhale to reach. Inhale to come up, shoulder blades down. Exhale, there's a lot of paying attention here. Paying attention to where the shoulder blades are on the rib cage. Using those abdominals to lift in and up. So really trying to lengthen through the sides of your waist. My arms are, are reaching out in front of me. They might dive a little bit, but I'm not trying to touch my toes. Let's just do one more. Lifting up and articulating upper spine, ribs, and back up. And then right from there, pop the legs up. Open leg rocker. Now, if you get stuck, um, just hold on, just bend your knees, right? Hold on to the back of the thighs. Otherwise, go a little bit higher. The peril of going higher before you're really ready is you're gonna kind of wrench your low back a little bit. So let's right here, hug the sides of the waist in, put your focus on your low stomach, and then rock back, and keep your focus on your low stomach to come back up. Right, so there should be no low back anything happening here, or upper back. Rock back. And back up. Keep your feet just shoulder distance apart. Don't go too wide. Yep. There you go. And back up. And one more. Rock back. And back up. Okay, now bring your legs together. Heels touch. And roll onto your low back. Feet up to the sky. Hands by your sides. Heels are still touching. Now you can do that modification here that we've been doing to help the hip flexors, which is bend the knees, right, and do your leg circles from here. Otherwise, legs straight. Heels are together the whole time. Pull your legs in toward you. Circle to the right and back to center. Pull them in. Circle left. Back to center. Circle right and center. And circle left and center. Now, look up. Look at your low belly. Hands by your sides. And just see if you could start to lift your hips off the ground. It's not a very big movement. It's just like I was going to try to peel off. But I'm looking up looking at my stomach so I can't try to use my upper back and neck to do that. Just do that one more time. Lift and back down. Now put your head back down. Now pretend you're looking at your stomach, right? Curl, tuck your chin a little bit. Round, round like as if I was about to lift up. Round in that way. Push your back down into the mat, your upper back, and now lift your hips up. And see if you can do it without arching your neck and back. Okay, so that's the beginning of all of the various overhead postures. A lot of times, I can't really do this, but a lot of people do this, where they start to lift their hips up and they arch their upper back. So check, pick your head and chest up again, look at your low stomach, lift your hips up, place them back down. Lift them up, down, circle to your right, center. Lift, circle to your left, center. Okay, good, and then we'll wrap up for salt. So that's just a way to maybe help you not arch, not go into that sort of reverse arch. The saw, arms come out to your side. So once again, working on that posture, pelvis is vertical, abdominals hugging in. Inhale, sit tall, turn to your right. Pinky finger goes out past pinky toe, and then come up, and turn, and reach. And there's a breath if you want to exhale there, and come up. Inhaling and turn and then exhale. Look into your stomach. Inhale, come up and turn and exhale. Inhale, up and turn and exhale, reaching back and forward. And last one, it's a shoulder blade stretch. And then we'll come all the way over onto our stomach. Forearms down for the neck roll. So legs straight behind you, pelvis pressed into the mat. And so this neck roll, by the way, is not part of the traditional Pilates mat series. I learned it's a relic of Wendy Hayes' Pilates mat class, and I like it. And I like it because it teaches us how to get traction out of the low back, to get extension here, right? While we're potentially, we're in extension, but are we, are we potentially scrunching the vertebrae? So while we're in extension, which means back then, can we get length? So I really want you to lengthen out of the thighs. You can even lift one hip a little, reach that thigh bone back, or just lift the other hip, reach that thigh bone back, 
really get space. Then hug the sides of the waist in. So that's what this exercise is about. Look to your right, tuck your chin, circle it around, look left, and center. Now keep that extension. Look left, circle, look right, and center. Look right, circle the chin down and around, look left, and center, and look left, circle, look right, and center. Come all the way onto your stomach. You should, if you successfully maintain extension and traction in the low back, you will not need to then go right into a counter pose like child's pose. That's a good litmus test. Stretch your arms straight out, forehead down. We're going to push the pelvis and the pubic bone into the mat and then lift everything else off the mat. Lift your low abdominals, hug the sides of your waist, lift your arms and legs, keep your head between your arms, and then rest. You can just come down like a little wet noodle <laughs> onto your mat. Pause. And we'll do it again. Two more times. Heels turn in slightly toward each other. Uh, uh, forehead down. Push the pelvis down. Lift your arms and legs. Lengthen. Lengthen through the back of the skull as well. So just double check that you're not scrunching the back of the neck. Find the head as part of the whole spine. And then come down. And again, kind of wet noodle on the mat. Take a nice full breath. We're purposely engaging the low back muscles and then letting them go, right? It's like that shoulder blade exercise we're about to do. We do 100% engagement and then totally let go. So last time, arms out, forehead down, push the pelvis down, push the pubic bone down, lift. So yes, you're scrunching up the back body, but now you're also lengthening it. You're scrunching it to engage it, but then reach, 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 reach long, and then come down and it totally lets go. Okay. Now, we will sit back on the heels briefly. Okay, so you can see this is the opposite of what we were just doing to our spine, right? And depending on your vertebrae, one, one or the other flexional extension will be more comfortable. All right, this is flexion, this is rounding the spine. Come back out, come around big beach ball, go knuckle to knuckle, elbows are wide. Still, pelvis is pushing down, still, you have to have that extension out of the low back. So I'm pushing the pelvis down, and I'm reaching through my legs, and I'm pulling it up through my abdominal muscles. Kick the right heel, go kick, kick, and left, kick, kick. If you can lift your knee a little bit off the ground, go for it, right, by pushing the top of the thigh bone where it meets the pelvis into the mat, but otherwise just kicking, trying to get the coordination of the kick, getting a little thigh stretch, it's all useful. We're gonna hold the pelvis still, last one. Good, and now double leg kick. Turn your left cheek to the mat. Take your hands one on top of the other on your upper back. Let your elbows fall toward the floor. When you do that, try not to let your heels fall apart as well. It's a funny little reflex there. So the heels are still toward each other. Kick your heels to your hips. One, two, three, and lift up. And this is the shoulder blade scrunch I was talking about. And then back down. Rest your elbows. Kick, two, three. Big scrunch. And then let it go. Elbows to the floor. Two, three with the kicks. And lifting, scrunch and stretch those shoulders. And then let them relax. Kick, two, three, and lift. And enough. Come all the way down. Okay, good. Sitting all the way back. We're going to turn ourselves around for the neck pull. Feet are forward. And hip distance apart. You could make the neck pull easier by having the feet together, right? Okay, just, just give me that heads up. The more you make the neck pull like the roll-up, the more accessible it is. So feet, then that feet would be together and hands would be out like this. Here we're gonna do one hand behind the other at the base of the skull. Just see how that goes. Now don't commit to having to have your hands back there. Okay, they can come apart. Notice this, yes, okay? They can come apart, they can come forward. So much better to be loose with the hands and nice to your neck and low back. So sitting tall, inhale, exhale, rounding that upper back. Inhale, sitting tall, stacking. Staying stacked, reach, reach, reach through your crown of the head as you hinge, and then start to round it out. Now this is where that traction in the low back comes in. And then pull the guts in and round back over. Sit tall. Hinging it back, really lengthening, hug the sides of your waist in. Now still really lengthening, kind of leave my legs behind as I roll onto the back of the pelvis 
And then once I get to the back of the pelvis, I'm going to hug the sides of my waist in a lot to come back up and round over. So we'll practice that. Do that two more times. Practice the hardest part for you. So you come up, hinging back. That might be pretty tricky. We're starting to roll out. A lot of people start to lose it. Once they get onto the flat of the pelvis, that's the hard part. So take your arms out, hug your waistline in a lot, and then round it over. One more time. Hinge it back, rounding out just to where you get stuck, and then undo your hands and unstuck yourself. <laughs> okay? And on the very last one, we're going to end on our back. Okay? So here we go. Hinging back, round it back, round it back, round it back, slow down, and then we're on our back for a shoulder bridge. Okay, so the neck pull is actually one of those exercises it's best to do sort of at your own pace in your own way. It's a good one for home practice because you have no peer pressure, nobody can see you, nobody cares, nobody cares anyway, even when you're in the studio. Do your own thing. Okay, so feet planted and press into the soles of your feet and notice when you do that, do you tuck your tail or do you untuck your tail? And let's see if we can find neutral which would be like the pubic bone and the pelvis is at the same height. You may have to lift your hips up a little and place them back down. That's neutral. In fact, let's take our hands to the pelvis, to the front of the pelvis, the heel of your hand on the, the pelvic bones, the fingertips on the pubic bone. Keep them in your mind anyway. They are relatively level, okay? Horizontal to the earth. Push into your feet, see if you can lift it, keeping it relatively level and back down. Notice you're going to have to have a big, what you feel like, low back arch to do that. Just do it one more time. Relatively level, that means not lifting through the pubic bone and back down. Okay, so you just activated your mid and upper back muscles. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to tuck your tail on this next one. So you lift, let your pubic bone lift, and notice you're no longer neutral. You're using your pelvic tuck. Use that pelvic tuck to your advantage. Engage your butt muscles. Engage your abdominal muscles. Okay, so now your pubic bone is distinctly above your hip bones. Got it? Put your hands to your sides. What I'm saying is there's no low back bend, like purposeful low back bend. If anything, I'm going to lengthen my low back a little bit there. Push into your right foot. So I just tell you that because for some of you who go into low back spasm in this, that's a real stabilizing force, the tail tuck. Push into your left foot. Draw your right knee up. Place your right foot down. Tuck, tuck your tail. <laughs> Shift your right foot. Draw your left knee. Keep tucking that tail. See, did you lose it? Yep, and left foot comes down. And then tuck your tail and lower back down. So that's a little backup action you can try when we do shoulder bridge next time. Okay, we're going to rock onto our left side for side kicks. So I'm on my left hip and left shoulder. On one, one edge, and my feet come off about two feet in front of my hips. Legs are straight, top hand across, top leg is reaching out so it's stacked perfect, perfectly on top of the bottom leg. So my heels are lined up, my big toes are lined up, but then once you're done admiring your feet, look straight forward. Lift that top leg hip height, and we'll kick the foot forward and back. Now I know a ton of you love to express your feet in this exercise okay so let's practice relaxing the top of the foot and instead trying to find the lower pelvic floor okay so pull in from the pelvic floor and stop trying to control the whole thing from your beautiful sole of your foot <laughs> which can have other times to express itself kick kick and reach the leg back one more kick kick and reach it back now stack heel over heel so here's a good foot expression time Point your toes up and then reach that heel out. Point up and then stretch your calf muscles as you reach that heel long. Point up and reach long. I'm trying to keep my pelvis steady here. Point up and reach one more as I'm drawing in from the low abdominals and then hovering right there. Turn your toe a tiny bit up to the sky. A little external rotation through that right leg. Little circles. One, two, three, four, five. And reverse. One, two, three, four, five, bend that top knee over, hold on, it's easiest to reach through and hold on, lift the bottom leg up, pulse it up for one, two, three, four, five little circles, one, two, three, four, five, reverse, one, two, three, 
four, five. Okay, stacking both legs. Let's do, I feel like one we haven't done for a while here. Um, ooh, this one. I always forget the name. Okay, point your toes. We're gonna draw the toes up the inner thigh and then stretch the leg up to the sky and reach it long. Draw the toes up, grand passe, that's what this is called, ballet term. Okay, French. And reach long. Toes draw up, reach the leg, and reach out. One more time like this, in this direction. And reach, and now reverse it. So you go up, bend your knee, try to touch as high up your inner thigh as you can. See if you can get above your knee to touch with your toes. You get to point your toes and reach. Nice and slow so that we're controlling the hips and kind of working a full range of motion. Last one. And then leg over leg, arm over arm, we balance and roll. And I'm going to flip from your roll onto our right side. Oh my gosh, I don't know if you guys know, most of you probably know Zoe Weil. She posts some just absolutely gorgeous photographs on Facebook. She's become an amazing photographer. And um, she posted a picture of a seal a hardware seal the other day that if you if you know her and you are on her Facebook page you have to go check out because it's the best most beautiful seal photo and it reminds me of us in this posture okay reach that top leg out so remember we're heel over heel really stretching through the top hip now look straight forward and kick your foot forward and reach it back and kick kick and reach it back kick kick and reach back and kick kick and reach back and reach. And we'll do two more. Kick, kick, and reach. And kick, kick, and reach. And then stack and heel over heel. Point your toe up and reach it. Reach, 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 reach. Yes, point up and reach out. Stretch that calf muscle as you reach. Point up and reach long. Good full range of motion in the hip. This is a great thing, exercise in this class. We never do this range of motion during the day. One more time. So it's nice to open the hips up to the sides. Okay, little circles hovering, stacking the hips. One, two, three. Let go of the top of your foot now. And reverse. One, two, three, four, five. Bend that top leg over. Lift your bottom leg up. And it pulses up for one, two, three, four, five. And little circles. One, two, three, four, five. Reverse your circles. One, two, three, four, five, leg down, and ground passe. So, still looking straight forward, don't look at your toes. Draw the toes up the inner thigh, reach it up to the sky, and reach long. And draw up, 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 up. Oh, here comes Seamus. It's very tragic, the stores are out of his favorite cat food. And reach, so if you think quarantine's hard for you. Okay, now reverse. <laughs> it's really hard. If you're a cat with strong food preferences, touch your inner thigh and reach long. Go up to the sky, point your toes, touch your inner thigh, reach it long. We're going to do two more. Go up, bend the knee, and go. Yeah, so nice, slow, smooth movements, range of motion. And there we go, leg over leg. Now, stacking yourself like a seal, like a harbor seal, and we're going to roll onto our back for teaser. I'm going to flip head to toe, but wherever you are, it doesn't matter. Move your butt. Okay. So, <laughs> here we go. Try your knees in. Teaser is like roll up. So get creative with the arms and the legs to help you not strain your low back. As long as your front ribs are tucking in, see like my head and chest are up. As long as that's happening, I can do whatever I need to do to rock up. Don't go into extension, meaning back bend, at any time, and you'll be okay. Alright, so let's do this one. Arms up to the sky, knees bent. Just rock yourself up. Balance. Right? Then I can take my legs up in a tabletop. And then I'm going to leave them there and roll down, articulating, hugging the waistline in. And then I'll take the arms a little higher, rock up, and balance. And then if I want to push it a little further, I'll straighten my legs, leave them there, draw the sides of your waist in and roll down, and arms to her overhead. Except I have a cat in the way. And come up and balance. And then leave your legs there. Roll it down, roll it down, roll it down. Articulate. Don't go into extension. We're just lengthening. We're not going into a back bend there. Come up. Last one. Balance. Don't smush your cat. And then little circles. One, two, three. Reverse. Oh, stay with me. One, two, three. All right, great. And roll it down. Nice. Okay. Roll over onto your stomach. Oh no, sorry, let's do hip circles. I, I keep, so come back up, come back up as if you were in T 
knees are rocked back up. I keep leaving hip circles out. So, come on to your forearm behind you. My legs are floating. Okay, heels are together, but my knees might be a little bit apart. I'm really lengthening through the sides of my waist. It's a hard one to feel this position, um, the engagement, and not going into a big back bend, but not sinking. So you're trying to just judge where, is your, where are your ribs, hold them there, draw your knees into your chest, circle them around to the right, to the left, hug them into your chest. Circle them around to your right, circle them around to your left, and then kick the legs. And then we go right, and left, and right, and kick, and left, and right. Just get the general coordination of this, and left kick. And then we'll go right, and left, and right, and kick, and roll it over onto your stomach for swimming. We'll break down hip circles um, at some point, but for now, it's just getting that coordination. Seamus, hi bud. We're swimming. Okay, you gotta come all the way onto your stomach. Arms and legs long. Forehead down. Push the pelvis down. Come to that low hover. Really low so that you're not so much in a back bend, okay? Pelvis is pretty neutral. I'm not arching the low back, I'm lengthening out of it. Lift your left leg and right arm. Right arm and left leg. And then kick for inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five, and that's it. <laughs> and high. We'll spin ourselves around. Yes. <laughs> um, for our arms to start with plank. Come on to your arm, come on to your knees, come on to your hands. So spread your fingers nice and wide, outer shoulder distance apart. And we're gonna do a 30 second plank. Either straight legs or knees bent. But remember, if your knees are bent, your hips are tipped forward here. So I'm still in the line, knee, hip, and shoulder. Ready? Come all the way up. Start. I'm timing you. Come up to plank. And if you want to do a little toe rock, you can always do double leg toe rocks just to work the toes. You know, the traditional plank here is one leg up at a time rocking on the toes. But if you just work rocking the toes together, one gives you something to do, and two, it's great on the toes. And that toe flexibility. Stay with it. Three, two, and one. Come down. Okay. And then turn yourself around, and we'll do this front plank. So my feet are hip distance apart, hands behind me, fingers pointing toward my heels. So that's part one, just opening up the wrists in that way, um, and the shoulders. That, that's a project. Some people can't even take their arms behind them that way. So um, this particular exercise is inaccessible, right, if you, if you can't do that with your shoulders. But if you're just tight, work on it. Right? Start opening the chest up here, pushing into the hands. I'm pressing into my fingertips, and then lift your hips up. So this exercise for now is more about mobility and just access than anything. I'm not dropping my head back, okay? So that's really key here. I'm looking forward, lifting my hips, trying to get my hips as high as my knees, and then back down. Okay, and then shake it up. So that's all we're gonna do for that. That position is very vulnerable in the shoulders and the wrists for a lot of people. Okay, and it's time for our boomerang introduction. Is he gonna let me do it? Here we go. <laughs> Boomerang introduction, like we did last time, not the very last class I taught before break. One foot over the other, crossing, okay? And legs are straight, and I'm gonna to touch my toes gently. I'm not, if I can't get to my toes, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just imagining touching toes, okay? So no strain there in the low back. Then come up to sit, hands by my sides, lift the legs off the ground. You may need to bend your knees to so demonstrate that, or you can bend my knees to lift so I'm not straining my low back. And then all I'm going to do is roll onto my back and recross my legs. Notice I could do this with bent knees the whole time. Because then I'm going to rock up to balance. Here we go. I'm balancing. Look, I've got bent knees. You could have bent knees. My legs are crossed. Take your hands behind you. Interlace your hands. And then come back. Land your feet. So this is like the beginner boomerang. Okay, now I'm going to reach my toes. Come back up to sit, hands by my sides. Lift, we're just gonna do this one more time on this side. Lift my legs, so if I can lift them straight, go for it, right? And then onto your back, we'll do the cat move. Recross your legs, 
Come up, if you can balance, balance. Hands come behind you, and then touch down, touch your toes, okay? There we go. We'll keep doing little by little with boomerang, and we'll get it. Seals, draw your legs in, dive through, hold on, and we rock back for one, two, three, and up, two, three. And again, if you can't rock back, don't worry about it. You're, either you don't have enough padding, or you get vertigo, don't worry. Just balance. Up and we go one, two, three. Back two, three. Up two, three. On this next one, undo your hands, cross your feet, come to stand. We're going to face the back of the room for some push ups. I've been working on rehabbing my shoulders, so you can join me with that. Heels are together, up and over. And I walk out for one, two, three and a half. I'm in my plank. For me, I'm putting my knees down and I'm keeping that plank so I can be really nice to my right shoulder. And I'm keeping a cat there as, as my general spacer too. But five push-ups, here we go. Elbows right into your sides for one. So I can have really good form this way. Two, I'm using my abdominal muscles a lot. Three, elbows push straight back, uh-oh. Four, he's not letting me do a full push-up. And five, all right. And then toes touch down, knees up, plank, put, 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 pike your hips up, walk your hands back, one, two, three, use your bones, hug them in and up, 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 and reach out nice and tall, hands to your sides, 